Minasan, konnichiwa, Abby des. Hey guys, it's Abby, and in today's video, I'm so excited to announce that it's in collaboration with the wonderful website YesStyle. As the title of the video explains, I will be recreating Dakota Rose's outfits. So I have partnered with YesStyle today to create a streetwear fashion lookbook. As the title says it, I decided to recreate some looks from the wonderful and beautiful Dakota Rose. She was a very popular model in Japan, specifically in the mid 2000s, and she modeled for a lot of very popular Japanese streetwear. Clothing shops that dedicate to different types of Japanese streetwear. Now, her looks were very representative of different Japanese streetwear, different Japanese subcultures. And so I thought, why not recreate some of her looks and give you guys a small little introduction to different Japanese streetwear, including l a r m e k e fashion, Lolita fashion, Nantete Seifuku fashion, Yami Kawai fashion. Kimikaji fashion, and the list goes on. I really hope you guys will enjoy this video and learn a little bit about different Japanese street styles. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight to the video. First Japanese street fashion I'll be discussing is Himekaji fashion. However, I cannot talk about that fashion style without discussing Himegiaru, where it originally came from. So, as you guys can see in Himegiaru fashion, a lot of emphasis are in lots of frills, bows, pink,、um, and I feel like the hair is a big, big element and really distinguishes Himegiaru fashion from Himekaji fashion. So, as you guys can see, the hair usually it tends to be blonde or a light brown, and the hair tends to be very over the top, very voluptuous. Of course, the Fashion as well is very girly, lots of pink, lots of frills. According to the article by Mard A, this fashion trend can be very exaggerated. Abundant frills and bows, humongous hair, and excessive makeup. They are over the line, but they are a princess in their own way. However, the Himekiyaru fashion trend is not for everyone. And if it's not the hair, then it's the makeup. For those who are not fond of the whole Himegiyaru look, but really want the princess concept, the said fashion actually has a toned down version and a lighter alternative, and it's called Himekaji. As I mentioned earlier, the hair is a big difference between Himegiyaru fashion and Himekaji fashion, as you guys can see here. According to the same article by Mard A, the whole aura of Himekaji is all about looking sweet and cute. From the hair, the makeup, and most specifically the clothes, the Himekaji fashion is not a difficult one to scour and style. Since it's mostly casual princess outfits, a frilly pastel dress, along with a few accessories and the right match for shoes, can surely pass as Himekaji fashion. So, as you guys can see, a lot of these outfits are very, very cute, very feminine, and the main focus and color, similar to Himegiyaru fashion, is the color pink. Pink and different shades of pink are very popular in the style. Very pretty, girly dresses. This is definitely an ultra feminine fashion style that is really cute. It comes to the hair, you guys can see you can do like cute braids.、Um, ribbons and lace are very popular, and ribbons in general are very popular、um, to be used in hairstyle. And as you guys can see, it's also much more toned down and not as voluptuous as Himegiyaru fashion. Popular fashion brand in Japan that cater to this community is Liz Lisa. Liz Lisa Lisa sells a variety of very beautiful dresses and really focuses on the key elements to Himekaji fashion, where things such as roses,、um, frills, lace, ribbons are a representative and shown in their fashion. If you take a look at the Liz Lisa website, you guys can see a variety of different dresses. This fashion style is a little bit more pricey since Liz Lisa's dresses do, do range from $70 to $100,、um, and that's just simply a dress. The items are definitely. Very worth it because of how beautiful and the attention to detail that comes to the dress and any item that you purchase, essentially. As you guys can see here, Dakota Rose is definitely dressing in a very Himekaji style fashion. She is wearing a Liz Lisa dress with roses on it,、um, as well as some lace at the bottom, these really cute heels. That is something that you will often see in Himekaji fashion. It's very princessy, very girly. Her hair is naturally blonde, but it definitely fits in the Himekaji fashion style where a lot of people will dye or a lot of girls will dye their hair light. Brown or blonde to kind of fit this style. So, this look is inspired, of course, by the beautiful Dakota Rose, and she's shown wearing what seems like a Liz Lisa dress. Now, this fashion style is significant of Himekaji fashion, where Liz Lisa is probably one of the most popular stores to shop at if you are part of the Himekaji fashion community. Just like Dakota Rose has a very beautiful floral dress,、uh, very significant of Himekaji fashion, where roses and flowers are significant in this fashion style. I decided to pick up this dress that I got from Yes Style. It is very, very beautiful. So, let's start off with the neck piece here. 
So this actually came with a dress, so it has the exact same pattern as the dress. However, I really wanted to recreate what Dakota Rose has, and she does wear a necklace with roses on them, so I thought this would work really well. Once again, it did come with the dress, so I wanted to kind of implement that with the outfit, and it did work well since I was trying to recreate Dakota Rose's outfit. And as I said earlier, she does wear a necklace with roses on there, or it appears like they are white roses. So it's very, very pretty. Um, so ask for the actual dress. So I was trying to find something very similar. It seems like she's wearing old Liz Lisa. I believe Liz Lisa fashion has kind of changed from the early 2000s to now. And this is the closest dress I could find on Yes Style um, that was similar to what she had. This is a sleeveless dress. She has a dress with the sleeves on. They're very, you know, small little sleeves. Uh, but I felt like this still gave that same essence of Liz Lisa fashion and specifically Himekaji fashion, which is kind of what she's representing here in her outfit and her fashion style. So this is the beautiful dress. In Himekaji fashion, as I told you guys earlier, flowers are very significant. Also pink is a very popular color in this fashion style and people really love it. And it's just very cute, very feminine. Definitely not like maybe your... When it comes to mind, you know, street fashion, you might think just, you know, black, more darker, more grunge colors. And what I love about Japanese street fashion is that there is room for everyone. And if you are very girly and you want to try a different street style, Japanese street fashion really does allow that. These are the shoes that I felt would work really well for this look. I know Dakota Rose wears different heels, um, but I felt like this would work really well. They have really pretty pearls and they are white. So these shoes have a bow on the back. You do hide them from the back and they have, once again, these really pretty pearls and they're in this really nice white, almost pearl color. I think this works really well specifically for Himikaji fashion since ribbons and lace is also something that's very common in this fashion style. And um, I felt like it really worked well for the outfit. So once again, maybe it's not exactly as to what um, Dakota Rose wears, but the essence is still there and it definitely does hit those elements for Himekaji fashion. The next Japanese street fashion we'll be discussing will be Lolita fashion. According to Wikipedia, Lolita fashion is a subculture from Japan that is highly influenced by Victorian clothing and styles from the Rococo period. A very distinctive property of Lolita fashion is the aesthetic of cuteness. This clothing subculture can be categorized into three main substyles, gothic, classic, and sweet. So the first one is classic Lolita. As you guys can see here, this is the way classic Lolita fashion is like. A lot of the colors are very, very neutral. The next style is gothic Lolita, which is a very popular style of Lolita fashion. And it's very distinct characteristic is the prominent color of black. You see black in a lot of gothic Lolita dresses. And the last and final one, there's so many more branches, but these are the basics, is sweet Lolita. My personal favorite, you do see a lot of emphasis on the color pink, pastel colors, and just in general vibrant more girly colors which is honestly my personal favorite now dakota rose did model for a lot of very popular japanese brands and one of them being baby the star shines bright and this is a particular look that i decided to recreate she's wearing a very beautiful lolita dress with the colors being pink and blue as the main focus and you can see here she's looking very pretty so let's go ahead and see what i've created so this next look is inspired by Lolita fashion. So you guys can see in the image, Dakota Rose is wearing a Lolita dress. This one is not as elaborate as the one that she has. I believe she modeled for Baby The Star Shines Bright, which is a very well-known brand for selling Lolita dresses and fashion. If you are part of that community, then you're most likely familiar with that brand. She often was shown wearing blue, which worked really, really well for her. And I happen to have somewhat of a Lolita dress that was blue. So as you guys can see here, it looks like this. It's got this really pretty little detail right here. It's got this kind of like lace um, inspired detail. And then it has this really pretty blue ribbon to tie up on the front. Very, very pretty. Now, if you look at the arms over here, it has that same sort of lace that you saw right over here. Um, and as you look at the arms, they're quite baggy, but they're very cute. But it's very whimsical, and it has that same detail on the sleeves. Um, Baby the Star Shines Bright does sell a lot of Lolita dresses, and they do tend to have like a theme. So this, just like many other Lolita dresses, they will have some sort of detail here. I believe they did have like a um, Alice in Wonderland theme. Um, I think that was like Alice and the Pirates, if I do recall correctly. Um, they do have different patterns, and it's very common in Lolita dresses. Like I said, they do have some sort of story going on here, sort of theme. What you guys can see here, these it definitely gives me um, Alice in Wonderland vibes and then of course it has that same sort of pretty little detail here I'm not really sure the name of this pattern but it's very very pretty now let's go ahead and take a look at the shoes the shoes I feel like are a bit 
big, big detail when it comes to Louis de Fashion. Now, of course, this look that I have here isn't as elaborate as the one that Dakota Rose has, nor as elaborate as what most Louis does will, will wear. Um, there's a lot of details to Louis de Fashion, and there's very intricate, but yet very fun fashion style. Um, and um, the shoes are a very big component to the outfit. Really, it's heels, but um, I decided to wear these ones from Yes Style. I feel like these are very versatile and work really well for all street styles, um, Japanese street styles. So I really wanted to finish that off with this look. And of course, I definitely wanted to add the laced socks. Um, that's something that is very popular, as I told you guys earlier, in Louis de Fashion. And socks are used as accessories in Japanese fashion. You'll commonly see that in Japanese street fashion. Socks are very, very popular and do help finish off a look. And then of course, these shoes have a bit of a heel to them, which is very, very cute and works really well for Lolita fashion, since heels are something that you would commonly wear for a Lolita dress. And then here you guys can see these have cute little hearts on them. Um, and the actual color is just black. It's a very neutral color that works well for everything. It has this crisscross detail here, which is really pretty. It has these cute little accents, these little details right here. They're very, very pretty. Definitely screams Japanese street fashion. Let's go ahead and talk about Larme K fashion. As you guys can see, it's a very, very girly fashion. Now, according to the article, the guide to Larme K fashion by the website From Japan, first introduced in the 2012 debut of the Japanese fashion magazine Larme, Larme K combines sweet, soft innocence with maturity and intelligence. The magazine caters to young, sophisticated women who read, enjoy art and history, and travel. Larme K is not recognized as an actual style subculture in Japan. Instead, girly, gari fashion but has gained popularity around the world under the name Larme K and continues to uphold a loyal and enthusiastic customer base. This is the Larme magazine that really started this whole fashion you know, community. I still consider it to be a Japanese fashion subculture because it does have a really big fan base. I know a lot of people love this style. These are examples of some of the outfits that you would wear if you're part of the Larme K fashion community or you want to try out this look. There's many different fashion brands that focus on or cater to this community. These are examples of some hairstyles as well as makeup that you would want to wear if you are part of the Larme K fashion community. And once again, it's very girly. Um, the hair is light or it can be black. It's very, very cute and really focuses on being feminine and girly. This is the outfit that I'm going to go ahead and try and recreate. This is the beautiful Dakota Rose. I'm not really sure what magazine she was modeling for, but this definitely reminds me of Larme K fashion with its very girly, feminine details from the beautiful white top with the princess sleeves and the past blue skirt. So this next look is inspired by Larme K fashion as you guys can see in Dakota Rose's image. She's wearing um, a very girly outfit and I feel like this is definitely representative of Larme K fashion. So let's start off with the top. So the top here you guys can see um, Dakota Rose wears a white top and so I was able to find this one on Yes Style. It's very very cute. It's got this really pretty lace details and a really pretty Peter Pan collar. Well once again as you can see here it has those elements of Larme K fashion which is lace, ribbons, frills, things like that. So you can see here there's a very um, pretty pastel blue ribbon which once again pastel colors are very significant in this fashion style. And then it does have these cute little buttons here. They are heart shaped with um, kind of an appearance of a pearl. And then you guys look up at the sleeves here. It's very very pretty. This really pretty sheer detail over here and they're kind of like um, I would consider them like um, princess sleeves or puff sleeves here. Um, and then once again, it has that cute um, blue ribbon, just like the rest of the shirt. Very, very pretty and really representative of Larme K fashion. Once again, it has the same thing on the other side. So as you guys look at the back of the shirt, it is so, so cute. I was actually pleasantly surprised because I did not know that it would come with this extra detail. So it pretty much looks like bunny ears. It is so cute. They are in this really pretty pastel blue color and it has these cute little lace around it or this, I'm not really sure what the name of this, I think it would be frills. And this is essentially the shirt is so so cute. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the skirt. Now I did have to kind of fold it inwards since the skirt um, was too big. Um, they only had a size large in stock um, so that's kind of what I ended up getting but um, I think it still worked out and it's very cute. Um, Dakota Rose does wear sort of like a blue colored skirt. It was really hard to find something similar to what she has but, but I was able to find this one on Yes Style and I think it's a very versatile item that can work well for lots of outfits, lots of kawaii outfits. 
and it does have that signature pastel color that we are looking for when it comes to Laura McKay fashion. So it looks like this. It's very, very nice. Um, it's kind of got this sort of denim material or it's, it's definitely more of like a thicker material. It's not very thin. So as for the shoes, we're wearing the exact same shoes as some of the other outfits. Now, as I told you guys earlier, these shoes work really well for lots of different Japanese street fashion styles, um, including Lolita and Laura McKay um, and lots of different styles. I think it's really, really cute and once again, it just works really well for this style. It's very girly, very cute. So Dakota Rose wears different shoes, but um, I really wanted to use these shoes, so I think they worked really, really well. I also don't have any other um, light colored shoes. I usually try to go for like black shoes because they are very neutral and they work well for all outfits and it works really well for this outfit as well. I did want to add the lace socks as well from Yes Style because I thought they were so, so cute. And I feel like it really kind of finishes off the look with, with everything because there's a lot of lace and it works well for Lime K fashion as well. The next Japanese street fashion I'll be discussing is Nanjate Seifuku fashion. It's a fashion style that I've been promoting a lot and it's essentially a fashion style that focuses on wearing school uniforms as an everyday fashion style. We're really trying to mimic a typical Japanese school uniform so these are some really good examples of what Nanjate Seifuku fashion is. As you guys know I am literally obsessed with this fashion style and I do like to kind of mix my own little make my own little twist to this fashion style so I love to combine kawaii fashion with school uniforms as well as anime fashion and school uniforms in general i feel like they do go really well together in this community you are able to do that it isn't very strict um, of course you are trying to follow and recreate a typical japanese school uniform but because it is a fake school uniform you do have a lot of freedom to play around with the colors make it more kawaii as well as be a little more colorful with accessories such as maybe a pink ida bag one of the many reasons why i love this fashion style now one brand that really caters to this fashion style is the brand gonomi now i will be doing a separate video i'll probably be posting it next week but i will be explaining this fashion style in depth from how it started how it originated some popular shops of course talking about gonomi and its origins and why it is so popular as well as why people dress in the style so please be looking forward to that video now dakota rose is very well known for dressing in that they say fashion she did wear a lot of preppy outfits and was well known for wearing preppy fashion this is one in particular that i really wanted to recreate where she looks very very cute She's wearing a very typical Japanese schoolgirl bow, a very cute pink cardigan. As you guys can see, she definitely played around with the colors, so it is very vibrant and very girly. And once again, this is definitely very Nantate Seifuku, since maybe you wouldn't necessarily wear this to a school because of the colors, right? Most schools, you would not wear pink. It's usually more neutral tone colors, but the outfit is still so cute and a look that I really wanted to recreate. This next outfit is inspired by Dakota Rose, and she is wearing a very preppy inspired outfit. Now, this outfit would definitely fit into the Japanese street fashion known as Nantate Seifuku fashion and it literally just means fake school uniform in Japanese. Now let's start out with the top. This outfit I was trying to recreate as close as possible as to what Dakota Rose wears and she wears a white button up top. That's exactly what I decided to do here. She also wears a very um, colorful bow. It's a very typical Japanese bow. That's really what distinguishes Japanese school uniforms from maybe your western school uniforms. This specific bow. I had this one that I got off of Amazon and it's just pretty much a pink bow. It's very similar to the one they sell at Konami. Now Dakota Rose wears like this sweater, like kind of like a cardigan. Um, that's a very pretty pastel pink color. So I decided to wear this one that I got from Brandy Melville. I think it's so, so cute. And I think it works really well for the style. And then as for the skirt, she wears a black skirt with this kind of white pattern to it. But I didn't have anything like that. So I decided to just go with a typical black A-line skirt or a black schoolgirl skirt. That really does work well for a typical Nanta de Seifuku outfit or a fake school uniform. Now she does wear some white stockings um, and I didn't have any white stockings so I decided to just go with some white thigh high socks that I feel would work really well for this look and definitely does create that same sort of essence. Now if you take a good look at Dakota Rose's outfit you can see that she's wearing some black heels. They kind of look like Mary Jane's with like a bit of a heel to them and so I felt like of course these shoes from Yes Style would work so well. I highly recommend you guys to invest in some Mary jeans and some shoes like these because they really work so so well for different types of Japanese street fashion styles and if you are interested in different Japanese fashion subcultures and you like one specific street style whether it's Lolita fashion, Alarmi K fashion, Kawaii fashion in general these shoes are really the way to go or, or something like this but I feel like this definitely really worked well for the outfit and works excellent for most of the outfits that I showed you guys in this video.
The next Japanese street fashion we'll be discussing is kawaii punk fashion. So as you guys can see, a lot of the colors tend to be black and red. It really is a blend of sort of like grunge, um, gothic, pastel gothic fashion, and it is very, very cute. It also kind of reminds me of yummy kawaii fashion where a lot of the colors are still pink, vibrant colors with a mixture of black as the emphasis. According to the article by Melissa H.W. in regards to punk fashion specifically, plaid patterns are a significant element to this fashion style specifically for women in regards to skirts that they wear. A group of people who I really feel represent um, kawaii punk fashion would be the popular J-pop group known as Baby Metal. This particular look, you can see that they are wearing a red plaid skirt and a lot of plaid elements, which is very significant to punk fashion. Here you can see another look that they are wearing with the main emphasis being black and red. Japanese punk fashion on its own is very, very popular and has its own story. However, I did feel like Dakota Rose here was definitely showing kawaii punk because um, what she's wearing is quite cute, quite kawaii. As you guys can see, she's wearing a plaid dress with some black um, Mary Janes. I believe they are like heels. They're very, very cute and that's why I really wanted to put emphasis on this style being more like kawaii punk since it's not really just punk fashion since it has a lot of very girly and feminine elements similar to Himekaji fashion. This next look is inspired, of course, by the beautiful Dakota Rose, and she's shown wearing this really pretty dress. But this dress is a dress I got at a thrift store in Japan. Um, thrift store is called Closet Child. I felt like this dress would work really well and is very similar to what Dakota Rose wears. So let's go ahead and take a look at this dress. So this is a Liz Lisa original dress. Um, it is so, so cute. It's got these really pretty heart details on the front. Once again, it has that pretty detail. It definitely reminds me a little bit of Christmas, but um, a kawaii Christmas. The front detail of the dress, it kind of reminds you, or kind of reminds me of a maid dress in that kind of detail on the front. We have um, apron that the maids wear at maid cafes. It's very, very cute. So on the sleeves, it looks so cute. It's got this really cute little detail um, on the rim of the sleeves. Area up here, it's very, very pretty. And here's a better look at the hearts. Um, they're very, very cute. Definitely kind of reminds me of like a Christmas maid uniform a little bit. Um, but it's so, so cute, guys. As for the skirt, it looks like this. It does come with its own sort of like ribbon to tie on the waist. Um, we did have to fold it a little bit because it, it does fit quite long and Dakota Rose's dress is a little bit shorter. So I wanted to make sure that it was as close as possible as to how her dress looks, but it's very, very beautiful. So it does have this really pretty detail at the bottom of the dress. It's really pretty little ring. I think this would be considered a ruffle design, I think. I think they're ruffles, but they're very, very cute. Definitely adds a nice extra detail to the dress. As for socks, she does wear these sort of like cream colored knee high socks. I just pretty much folded the white thigh high socks that I own. I just kind of tucked them into the shoe. And as you guys can see here, it looks like this, sort of similar to what she has. And of course, they finished off the look with these really, really cute, um, like Mary Janes. And yeah, Lolita shoes as well. She wears some black Mary Janes, I believe, with like a bit of a heel to them. So once again, I felt like these shoes work so so well this look definitely reminds me a lot of um baby metal fashion kind of considered like kawaii punk fashion which is another japanese street style that's very popular i don't know if it has a specific name to it maybe it does i just haven't been able to find it but it definitely gives me baby metal vibes with the color scheme but it's still very kawaii which is like that main element to this, this style so now let's go ahead and talk about the Japanese street fashion known as Yami Kawaii. As you guys can see, this definitely screams Japanese street fashion as soon as you look at it. According to Japanese fashion Wikia, Yami Kawaii is a sickly cute fashion that was derived from Yume Kawaii with a strong emphasis on sickness motives. It is a part of anti-kawaii, which adds opposing elements to typical kawaii style in order to leave a greater impact. As the word yami means both sick and dark, it revolves around not only medical but also dark things related to mental health. As you guys can see here, these are examples of some of the outfits that you would wear if you're part of the Yemi Kawaii fashion community. Colors such as black, pink, purple are very present in this fashion style and it's something that you would wear if you are part of the Yemi Kawaii fashion community. To represent this look, I decided to wear my favorite shirt that I purchased in Japan back in 2019 at the very popular shop called Listen Flavor. I believe they do kind of sort of cater to Yemi Kawaii um, fashion, their fashion community. And this is the top that I purchased along with 
with my twin sister. I got the black one, my sister got the red one. Um, and they did a collaboration with Ranma One and a Half, one of my favorite animes. And the way it is styled is really very um, similar to Yami Kawaii or kind of how you would dress in Yami Kawaii fashion. However, um, the anime Ranma One and a Half has nothing to do with the Yami Kawaii fashion community. However, the way it is styled and presented on this website, as well as the store in general, is very um, similar to Yami Kawaii fashion and how you would dress in Yami Kawaii fashion style. One of the most significant elements of Yami Kawaii fashion is you know, wearing a t-shirt with an anime character on the front. So that is why I kind of put this outfit that you guys are about to see um, in the category of Yami Kawaii fashion. So this style really reminds me of Yami Kawaii fashion. That so this fashion style um, derives from Yumi Kawaii fashion. However, it does have a much stronger emphasis on stronger themes um, as well as um, darker colors. I believe Yumi Kawaii fashion, um, the colors tend to be like pinks and whites, so the colors are a little bit more colorful. Um, however, in Yami Kawaii fashion, um, this style, um, its colors really focus on darker colors. Now, I wouldn't necessarily consider this outfit to be Yami Kawaii, however, it does look quite similar. Um, there was one point in this fashion style that definitely reminded me of this outfit. So in this fashion style, a lot of people wear um, t-shirts with an anime character um, on, on the t-shirt. So I definitely felt like this outfit was similar to that concept. However, I don't think it's necessarily that type of fashion style. It is sort of similar, but not exactly there. Um, I don't want to talk about this fashion style because I'm not 100% familiar with this style nor do I know enough information to you know, be teaching people about this style. I don't want to give any incorrect information. This fashion really reminds me of just your typical street fashion. You know, I think that if you think about Japanese street fashion, this might come to mind. Um, I definitely did feel like it could sort of branch to Yami Kawaii street fashion, but um, it does, uh, I do consider it to just be like, you know, simple, just Japanese street fashion. So here we have a t-shirt. This is a red t-shirt inspired by one of my absolute favorite um, animes of all time, Ranma One and a Half. My twin sister and I actually got these t-shirts. I have a black one that you guys will see in a little bit. Um, this is my twin sister's t-shirt and it is red. It's really, really beautiful detail on the front. Kind of reminds me of like a typical, you know, Chinese, you know, clothing, piece of clothing. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys an image here. Um, but that's because Ranma does, is shown wearing, you know, kind of typical traditional Chinese clothing or I'm not really sure necessarily what it's called so I don't want to um, say anything correctly but I'll, I'll put an image of what I'm talking to you guys about uh, Ranma's outfit and then kind of what he was trying to wear I do believe it's a traditional Chinese outfit um, maybe mistaken but that's why they added this detail here it says Ranma one and a half here and then it's Ranma wearing a purple top uh, I'm not sure this is his male form or his female form. I think it might be his male form. I'm not too sure. If you guys have seen the anime, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. If you guys take a look at the sleeves right here, this have this really pretty and really cool detail right here. It definitely really goes well with the whole vibe. And once again, the colors are black, red, so definitely much more like a kawaii punk. So I ended up getting this belt at a shop in Japan. I'm not quite sure what the name of it was, but I was trying to mimic um, Japanese street fashion. I saw a lot of um, people, a lot of girls would kind of dress in this cool street fashion, specifically like in Harajuku and they would pair off a big t-shirt, like a baggy t-shirt with a cool belt like this. So that's why I ended up purchasing this belt. And I often saw them tying their belt in this interesting way. Um, you guys can see um, images on my Instagram. I'll put it up here if you guys can see, but I actually ended up wearing something similar. And this is very typical, I guess, when you think of a typical you know, street fashion or a stereotypical street fashion and the color scheme and things like that, that's kind of what might come to mind. And this is a style that I wanted to mimic because I saw a lot of girls and guys dressing in this style. Now, as for my um, socks, I decided to just wear these thigh-high socks and kind of um, tuck them inside the shoes so they were more knee-high socks. Now, as for the shoes, I feel like these black Mary Janes work really well. Of course, they're very kawaii and um, I feel like these yes style shoes work for all outfits, as I said one too many times. But they really do work and they work really well, especially for this outfit. So this next um, outfit is pretty much the exact same as the other one, except this top is black and this one is my uh, my shirt. As you guys can see here, this sort of detail up top right here is a red color. The other one was black and then it has the same sort of design on the front, except the outfit is red. It has that same exact detail as the other one, um, except everything is black and white. Now, of course, the socks and the shoes are the same as well. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making this video for you guys. And I really hope that you guys learned something about Japanese street fashion. Was there a style that you particularly like? Maybe you're already part of a Japanese fashion community already. If you are, then please let me know. 
I'm personally part of the Inanta de Seifuku fashion community. If you guys want me to do more fashion analysis videos regarding Japanese street fashion or any sort of fashion style that you guys are interested in, I love all sorts of fashion styles. So if you guys are interested in those type of videos, then please let me know. I love to do more fashion analysis videos where it's really dedicated to one style. Now, once again, I am so happy to have been able to work with YesStyle once again. Go ahead and check out their website. I'll be leaving a link to the website in the description box below in case you guys are interested in any of the items that I got. I will also be linking them as well. If you guys are interested in Japanese street fashion, Japanese fashion in general, then definitely check out YesStyle. They sell a variety of different items that fit within different Japanese street styles. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, then go ahead and check out YesStyle. And also don't forget to use my code capital C-U-T-E-123 or CUTE123 when you are placing your order. It will give you 5% off all your orders that you make on YesStyle. And honestly, it will really help out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.